Welcome everyone to Calculus BC. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing Chapter 8.1, which is slope fields. And we're going to start off, and uh, we're going to start off with this small, small little review of what a slope field does. And hopefully, we remember this from Calculus AB that basically a slope field is a graphical interpretation of what a differential equation is, right? And so. What we're going to do here is we're going to use each point here on this slope field to generate the slope of the of the tangent line at that coordinate in time. So uh, this one is pretty straightforward. It's dy over dx equals x. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go and point out all the places where x is equal to 0. And that's just going to be here, 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 and here. Uh, that seems pretty easy. Now, if you don't remember the slope fields from, from calculus AB, what I've just done is I've identified all my easy spots right here. And so all the easy spots are going to be uh, where x equals 0 because they're just flat. And then the way we tackle slope fields if we're drawing them is we just kind of look for coordinates that are kind of easy. We draw the slopes there. And then we figure out uh, all that other stuff. So from here, this point right here is going to be 1, 0. But since I don't care about the comma 0 part, that's part of y. Uh, my slope is just going to be 1. So I'll go and just draw like an, an estimated 1. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I'll just go and draw an estimated 1 right there. This one is actually, and, and in fact, in this entire column here has a slope of 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, as best I can, draw what that would look like. They're all sp supposed to be identical. This here has a x coordinate of 2. So I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit steeper, noticeably steeper. And it doesn't have to be totally perfect, but it's got to be decently good. So. Uh, 3 is going to be even more steep than the other one, so it'll look kind of like that. And then, of course, negative 1 will look like the opposite of the 1. It'll look kind of like this. And again, it's just kind of a guesstimation here. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but uh, as long as it's within a pretty decent ballpark, then we're going to be pretty good. So I'm going to go and draw my negative 2 slopes here, and then my negative 3 slopes here are going to look like that. Now, if you look at this image, if you look at it as almost like a web of certain uh, of a certain type of function, they all resemble the same kind of function. And what I'm going to get to with that is what happens when I actually separate the terms of this differential equation and integrate it. I'm going to separate the dx over. I get dy equals x dx. I'm going to integrate both sides. And I'm going to get y equals x squared plus c. So this is my general antiderivative for uh, for y equals x, right? Now notice how I don't have an initial condition for this, so I'm not going to be finding the exact function. This is more like the function anywhere. This plus c represents any vertical shift of the function. So I'll write this down: any vertical shift that may uh, accompany the function. And it's a constant, right? And which is why when we derive it, it goes away. And uh, but if you think about what that plus c does, that plus c actually plays a role in this slope field, right? Because if you notice, when we integrated the line, we got a parabola. Well, notice how this slope field looks like a bunch of parabolas, right? A bunch of potential parabolas, like one that's like this, one that's like this, one that's like this. And we can just keep on going down, right? Keep on going down, down this slope field here. And we can just draw as many parabolas as we want, all with their various passing points. Uh, so this plus c is the generalized antiderivative, uh, accompanies the generalized antiderivative, because we don't really know which parabola we want, right? It just depends on, on the initial condition of uh, of the of the initial differential equation, which will then dictate to me which part of the slope field I will be highlighting. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of the uh, the review of the slope field. And today's lesson is largely just a review. So we're going to come back, we're going to do a couple more slope fields, and then we're going to uh, match a couple and then we'll be all good. I'll be right back with the next couple problems. In this next example, I'm going to be talking about this uh, differential equation here, this non-separable differential equation, right? And so what we're going to do is we're just going to draw his slope field, and then we're going to figure out, uh, you know, like a particular curve that passes through a point, and I'll give you guys that point in a little bit. Some general strategies when it comes to drawing a slope field is definitely look for some parts that are easy. Now, that's a pretty arbitrary word, but uh, since the differential equation is x plus y, Hopefully it makes sense that there might be some flat spots on this thing. Like for example, when x and y are the same value, but one's positive and one's negative, 
that might be a great place to draw a little flat spot. So uh, the only times that that ever happens is actually in quadrants uh, one and three versus quadrants one and two uh, versus quadrants two and four, right? So let's go and just see if we can find a place like that. Like say, uh, let's say a negative one comma one, right? So that would be if x was negative one and y was one, well, we'd be flat, right? And then if x was negative two and y was positive two, we'd be flat. Zero, zero, flat. One, negative one, flat. Two, negative two, flat. So that seems pretty straightforward, hopefully, that makes sense. And now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna let all the x's become zero and just focus on y. So in this case, this is zero, one, so my slope is one. This is zero, two, so my slope is gonna be two. This is zero, negative one, so my slope's gonna be negative one. Zero, negative two, it's gonna be negative two down here. Now the same thing is going to happen with these. So now again, this is one, zero, so my slope is one, then two, then three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And then from here, you just have to kind of put stuff together. So it looks like this point's one comma one, so this slope is going to be two. One comma two, so this, is, this slope's gonna be three. So that's gonna be two comma one, so two plus one is three. Right, and so look at that, that look, look at how that happens right there. Uh, let's see, this is gonna be two comma two, so that's gonna be four, so that's gonna be like really high up there. Three comma one is gonna be four. All right, three comma two is gonna be five, so that's gonna be like way up there. So at this point, I'm gonna go and pause this thing and just fill out the rest of the slopes. Uh, that way you guys can kind of see how this is done, so I'll be right back. And we're back with the rest of this slope field drawn in. So I apologize if you needed to really watch me draw that in, but I figured I wouldn't burden you guys with something so tedious. Um, so what we've just found is we've just found the slope field for this differential equation anywhere, right? So this, so whatever this thing may integrate into, this is kind of what he's going to look like, at least in the boundary of negative three to three with the range of, ne of, of uh, negative three to three also in a three by three window. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the particular solution. We're going to actually draw the solution curve. So solution curve through, through zero comma one. And all you can really do here with this, I'll go and change colors, I'll, I'll switch it up to green, I think that stands out a little bit, or blue. Um, all you can really do is just guesstimate like where this slope is taking you. So let's go and put the blue dot here. And from here, notice how the slope is telling me to move upwards. So the, it's almost like a river stream. I'm just gonna move upwards here, and I'm gonna move up towards one like that. It's gonna move up off the screen like that. And then this thing, it's gonna be a little bit flat, and then it's going to slow, oops, darn it, it's going to slowly arc upwards, so it's going to look kind of like this. So what that blue curve represents right here is the exact curve that would go through, or more or less the exact curve, the exact curve that goes through uh, the point zero comma one. And again, you just kind of follow the slopes as if they were a river kind of, you know, guiding you on a, on a journey through, uh, through, through the canyon, and you just kind of go with the flow on those ones. And so, Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll be back with the next example when it comes to interpreting a slope field and then, uh, and then trying to do like a multiple guess or a multiple match. I'll be back in a flash. So in this problem here, we are going to try to match the slope field given to the choices here. And this is a pretty typical AP question uh, on the AP exam. So whenever you are looking at a slope field and you have to match whatever uh, differential equation represents said slope field, what you want to do is you want to look for those things that make the graph easy to identify. So for example, if you look at the flat spots, the flat spots will tell you a lot about the slope field. What they'll also tell you is they'll tell you what's also disqualified. Hopefully it makes sense that B and D are automatically out. The reason for this is because these guys are fraction based and a fraction based differential equation will invariably have times when its slope is undefined. So for example, if you look at B, B has a denominator of Y, which means anytime Y is zero, in other words, along the X axis, you would have either a blank there or a vertical line to represent a, a slope that is undefinable. But that doesn't seem to be the case. All these cases right here, this slope is very much defined. It's gonna be positive, lesser positive, lesser positive, and then more positive again. So that's definitely not the case here. B is gone. 
D for the exact opposite reason. Look at where X is. X is in the denominator, which means any time your X value is zero, your slope will be undefined, which means all along the Y axis, you're going to have blank spots because they're not filling it in or vertical lines because they want to define them as being uh, undefined. But that's simply not the case. We actually have zeros here flat, that it's completely flat along this area. So what that does is it boils it down to A versus C. So how do we determine which one it's going to be? Well, at this point, we might want to consider plugging stuff in. Um, and so in this case, if you look at all of the slopes, all of the slopes seem to be moving upward, right? They all seem to be kind of doing this motion here meaning all of the slopes are positive. So the only way you're going to be able to get something positive is if you absolute valued something or if you squared something or took it to an even power. That makes me lean towards C as my answer. But let's take a look at why A would be wrong. It's because if it's 0.5 xy, well, any place where y is negative but x is positive, Right, you're going to end up in this weird situation where you have a negative slope, right? So in quadrant four, that's where your x values are positive, but your y values are negative. But look at what the slopes are doing here. They're all positive, right? Which means this definitely cannot be the one. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of matching slope fields with differential equations. And again, this is just kind of a refresher on slope fields and how they are used to represent differential equations. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to get into actual separable differential equations, and we're going to figure out uh, how to integrate them, and at least review how to integrate them. So as always, please leave comments or questions in the comments area. I will see you all in the next episode.